Hi, my name is Richard. I love math, and I live and work in New York City. One of the things that keeps me in the city is the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Not only because I love art, but because I love math. Let me show you what I mean. Take a look at this ceramic tile. It's from a Hindu temple about 1,500 years ago. The temple was originally a Buddhist shrine, which leads to an unusual pairing. There are Buddhist images along the top, but Hindu images below it. But what about those marks in the middle? What are those? I had no idea. I had to look it up when I got home, and I learned they were numbers. The number is written with a Karasthi script. Going from bottom to top are the symbols for 5, 4, and 10. The tiles were numbered so that they could be put in the right place, and this is tile 19. That 4 intrigued me, though. I had seen Roman numerals before, and they have three distinct symbols for 1, 5, and 10, but this was my first time seeing a distinct symbol for 4. Can you see what I mean? When you go as far back as Karasthi or Roman numerals, they repeat symbols and don't have the nine distinct shapes that we're used to. In both cases, they have a slash for one. And then they have a symbol for either four or five, depending on the script. Then they repeat these symbols to make different digits. One floor below the tile, there is an Egyptian necklace that's even older. It's from around 1800 BC, over a thousand years before Roman numerals even existed. The pendant hanging from the necklace writes out a sentence, symbol by symbol in ancient calligraphy. It reads, The God of the rising sun grants life and dominion over all that the sun encircles for all eternity to Senusret II. Let's investigate the word eternity. It's written out as 1,100,000 years. Just like how we might say something takes us a million years to do, here, a very specific number has a less specific meaning. And just like the Karasthi or Roman numerals, Ancient hieroglyphics have different symbols for every power of 10, 1, 10, 100, 1,000, and so on. But unlike Karasthi numerals, hieroglyphics don't have a distinct symbol for 4. They just repeat the 1 symbol 4 times. Let's write out the number 327, for example. We've seen a tile and a necklace. One of the most striking parts of the Met's collection is just how many types of objects are in it. And there's one type of object that's covered in numbers. A watch. Take a look at this watch from the late 1600s. This British timepiece belongs to the museum because of its luxurious silver and expert craftsmanship, despite the small piece missing by the six. And you can see an unusual feature of Roman numerals and watches. Normally, four is an I followed by a V, but when telling time, four is usually shown with four I's. We don't know for sure why we do it this way, but you can find it even on watches and clocks produced today. But the Met spans the whole world, its collection includes watches with even more surprising numbers. This one is from around 1770, where Perigo Royal, a fine European watchmaker, designed it to be exported to places that use Eastern Arabic numerals. Eastern Arabic numerals look very much like Karasthi numerals for 1 through 3, and their 5 looks a lot like our 0. Here, we get a glimpse of an alternate universe, what our numbers might look like if history were just a little bit different. I can't help but notice the similarity between Eastern Arabic and Karasti numerals for 1, 2, and 3. I also can't help but notice what happens if you rotate them 90 degrees counterclockwise. Eastern Arabic numerals have one big difference that makes them modern like ours and way more efficient than Karasti or Roman numerals. They have a zero. This means that with nine unique symbols for 1 through 9, they can use place value to represent every number in the world. Just look at how much less efficient it is to write 55 in hieroglyphics. Look closely the next time you go for a walk or see someplace new. Do you see numbers in the tiles or clothing or clocks? Are the numbers beautiful, interesting, or maybe written differently than you're used to? Would any of them end up in an art museum thousands of years from now?